it's really a pleasure to be here with you today, um, joining from the beautiful Nairobi, Kenya, where the um, headquarters offices of the UN Environment Program are based. And um, I wish I was there in the in the Baha'i offices. I, I miss I miss the good times um, back in in, in 2019 uh, in the beautiful uh, conference room. And um, yeah, so it's uh, I think it's a uh, it's a uh, quite a moment uh, to to after coming from these uh, consultations on the UN Youth Office, and um, they really got me thinking and reflecting on um, on on you know how important it is to to really understand what meaningful engagement is, and um, and I think I have a few points that I wanted to share with you um, on on how I envision that uh, meaningful youth engagement um, you know should be applied. And one of these points is definitely that uh, participation needs to be institutionalized. And, and, that, I, and by, by saying that, I not only mean at the UN uh, as an organization, which is, I mean, by developing a youth office, having a, a youth office, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best way to institutionalize engagement. But, uh, but that goes beyond the UN. And uh, when we talk about government participation, we still see how young people are really underrepresented and how the, the policies that are in place in, in, in the national governments limit young people from even participating in the, in the political space. And, and that's one of, the, uh, one of the features that we have to really be looking at and, and finding ways to really change that. And I think that it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's one of the points that is, is necessary to really institutionalize engagement. Uh, I think through the civil society space, um, young people are really make, you know, have made, have made their voice heard, have been strong enough to, to put, uh, you know, their ideas out there. Um, but there are other spaces like in the government, like in, you know, in, in the private sector where we still need much more of that engagement. And that's when I, it takes me to the second point that meaningful youth engagement and uh, it's needs to be, um, you know, when, when we talk about the intergenerational aspect of, of engagement, uh, we need to build those youthful diplomatic skills to be able to really have a meaningful change at the policy level. But that only happens when we have intergenerational conversations and intergenerational action. And based on, 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 on my experience, I think that uh, before we build partnerships, I think we need to build friendships. And that happens with, the, with other generations. Sometimes it feels like we are... Um, you know, sometimes we feel like we're competing with the other generations, or it feels like we want to get our we're gonna want to get our points out there. But it feels that um, that it's it's something isolated from other generations. And I think that I've I've seen how meaningful change has happened when we build those friendships before we really move into partnerships. And and one of those um, key aspects of of building those friendships is that we need to um, find ways to put ourselves in the shoes of other generations and building dialogues with those other generations that might be on those leadership positions. And even if those visions that they have differ from ours, that doesn't mean that they cannot help you, they cannot help us get where we want to get. And, 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 and sometimes that's, that's a vision differently. We, we, we kind of want to go our own ways and build our own vision, but I've seen it myself as a young person in the UN system, is that we need to try to put ourselves in the, on the other generation's shoes, but also try to find ways that we could meet halfway and also help them or where they want to get, but also try to bring our, our ideas across, across, uh, you know, across the table without having to hurt other people's, um, you know, uh, vision. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, um, there are certain points that we definitely, you know, have no negotiation, but I think that, uh, there may, there's more than less, you know, people in the, in the older generation that are happy to help us than are not uh, happy to help us. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's something that we have to really keep in mind. And also think of the UN. Uh, I think I echo what Howard mentioned. The, U, the UN, it's, it's a common space. And we all come here to bring in our points and ideas. We sit down to, we, we make our voices heard. But when, when we talk about truly meaningful change is when we leave that, like that living room space and we go to our own room, which is our home, our countries, our, our neighborhoods, the people that are around, is around us. How does that really, those conversations that we're having here 
are really impacting those communities on the ground. And what are we making sure that even in our own space at home or with our own families, that they even understand what meaningful youth engagement and all what the SDGs are. And that's something that we really might, they should not forget. And, and, and before I, before I, I, I wrap up, um, I, I, I think that uh, you know, no, no other generation understands better you know, innovation and technology. And, and, and we could use that really on our advantage to, to, to make sure that what, what, um, you know, what, our, what our, uh, you know, our, our key priorities are, that we need to make sure that they, we bring in those spaces where innovation and technology is happening because we understand it better than anyone else. And I, and I think that's, that, that's something that the UN as an organization could not ignore that when young people get together online and outside and when they speak up, it's really hard to ignore. And that's when we see the truly you know, changes on in the institution. And, and, and that's why I, I think that after all these years when you know, many of you have been advocating for space, uh, we see the realization of a UN youth office, which you know, many de decades ago could have just been a dream. And, um, and, I, and I just wanna end up with, with, with that last part. And, um, and also just, uh, just uh, mentioning that in the UN Environment Program, we have a program called the Young Champions of the Earth, which is a, a program that is truly helping young people on the ground to, uh, to, um, to uh, solve environmental uh, issues in, the, in, their, in their communities. And, um, and the way that I, I, I've seen this program evolve is, when we are actually helping with resources, young people with ideas, and we're actually mentoring young people with those, you know, those projects that they have on the ground. So it's really a message to do not forget that even if we're sitting on these places with privilege, you know that there, there are still issues on the ground in our communities that we cannot forget, and that we're really, uh, you know, we really have the privilege to bring those issues up to the places that decisions are made. So thank you very much for this space, and and happy to be here. Over to you, Lily.